Hi guys, hello, welcome to my channel. My voice sounds disgusting, I am so sorry. <laughs> this might be the worst my voice has sounded this entire time I've been sick. I've been sick for like four or five days. Is my voice too bad? Should I not film? We're just gonna do it and hope for the best. The show must go on, especially right now because I literally have no energy to do anything else but be a potato. So let's go ahead and pick our August TBR. I promise you I will not film with my voice sounding like this again. It's way worse than I thought it was gonna be. I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, if you haven't seen the TBR jar from me recently, I did switch it up a little bit last month. And every color in this jar means something different. Here's a little like color key. And I'm sure as we go along, you'll kind of get the hang of it. So anyway, let's go ahead and start picking our prompts. Let's pick this one. Oh no. <laughs> the blue ones are basically my oldest books on my TBR. So more than likely, they're not gonna be ones that I'm the most excited for because they've literally been sitting on my TBR for the longest amount of time. But I did want to kind of put them in here separately into the jar, just kind of like force myself to read them. And I will say I do think it's working because I pulled two of them last month and I read both of them. Like I really made sure that they were a priority for the month. So let's see what this one is. Please don't be too bad. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm actually excited for this one. This is a game of retribution, which is currently at the very top of my bookshelf, so I don't want to grab it. But here's what the book looks like. I'm pretty sure this is the second book in the Hades x Persephone Hades spinoff. Essentially, Scarlet St. Clair has written a Hades and Persephone like retelling, and she's written two kind of like tandem series, one from Persephone's perspective and one from Hades' perspective. And this is the second book in the Hades Perspective series. So I'm actually really excited about this one because this is a series that I've been wanting to finish like this entire year. So there's that one. Prompt number two, let's see what else the jar has in store. And I'm gonna kind of dig a little bit and pull this one. Ooh, a purple one. I think the purple ones are my active ones. So essentially I need like a pet, a person, or I need to like go somewhere to complete the prompt. Okay, so this one is a book from my Blackwell's wish list. That's interesting. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head like what's on my list. It's mostly just like covers that I prefer the UK version of. So we're gonna go to my desktop and kind of like see what we've got to choose from and pick one. All right, so here is my Blackwell's wish list and there's not actually a whole lot on here. Uh, and let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and see what we've got. Okay, so this bottom one here is The Mermaid of Black Conch. And I'm gonna be honest, I literally put this one on here solely because I just liked the cover. <laughs> uh, but I do think, if I remember correctly, it did have kind of an interesting synopsis. So it says, On a quiet day near the Caribbean island of Black Conch, a mermaid raises her barnacled head from the flat gray sea. She is attracted to David, a fisherman waiting for a catch, singing to himself with his guitar. Uh, I don't know what that name is, but when she is caught and dragged ashore by American tourists, David rescues her from the aim of putting her back in the ocean. But it is soon clear that the mermaid is already transforming into a woman. So, I don't know. I think that sounds kind of cool. That one definitely sounds very summery, but I don't know if I'm really in the mood for that right now. Next up, we have an education in Malice. And this one, I definitely want to read at some point, but just not right now. That one's definitely more of like a fall kind of read. And then we have a few books from Lonnie Taylor. I think that might be how you say her name. Uh, the first three here are all a trilogy. And I did read the first book in this series already. I got it from the library. And the UK covers for these books are so stinking pretty. So I definitely do want to get them. But again, I did read the first book already. And it wasn't like my favorite book in the world. So I don't know. But also at the same time, I have actually thought about it quite a bit like since I read it. So I do want to get this series. I just don't know if I want to do it now because if I get one of these books, I'm going to get all of them. And I just don't want to spend that much right now. So I don't think I'm going to get that at the moment. And then also this is another book by that same author. Like I said, I think this is like a collection of short stories. And this one purely, like the cover of this is so, so pretty. So I definitely want to get them. But again, it's kind of like a, if I get one, I'm going to need to get all of them kind of a situation. So we'll go ahead and scroll past that. And then of course we have The Ballad of Never After. Ugh. I have this sitting on my list just in case one day by some kind of miracle it goes back in stock and then we have never by jessa hastings i was really excited about this book when it first came out but it kind of got mixed reviews so let me know what you think if you've read it uh i might still get it i probably will at some point but for now i don't think i want to then we have yours truly i've already read this loved it and i do want to own the book because i did love it so much and i do specifically want the one from the uk because i just love the color scheme a lot better on this cover 
Uh, then we have Wisteria by Adeline Grace. This one is not released yet. If this one was out, I would totally get this one, but it's not going to be released until later this month. So, I mean, I guess I could actually use that because I am going to buy it like as soon as it comes out. As soon as this says that I can buy it, I'm going to be buying it. So, I don't know, maybe that will be our pick. But let's go ahead and scroll up and see what else we have on the list. Uh, these next two are other ones that I got purely because I thought the covers were cool. This one is Greta and Valden by Rebecca K. Riley. And I do believe both of these books that I'm about to talk about are kind of like literary fiction kind of vibe. Again, I've said this so many times, but I don't really like books in that genre typically. So I don't think I'm going to like this, but... It's on this list just in case one day I want to try it out. And then the other one is Chlorine by Jade Song. And this one is kind of like a summer read about a mermaid, obviously, but like also I think it's a horror. Uh, as you can see on her tail, she's got like blood. And that just sounds really intriguing to me. But again, I'm still getting that kind of like vibe from like reviews that I've heard of this book. I think it's going to be a book that I don't actually like, like a fever dream kind of book. And I actually don't think it is about a mermaid. Uh, this one's about Ren, who is a swimmer and she basically loves swimming and she wants to be like the best swimmer because she wants to be a mermaid. <laughs> so uh, totally relatable. As a kid, my favorite thing ever was to go swimming in a pool and pretend I was a mermaid. So love the vibe of that. But again, I just feel like it's gonna be one of those fever dream type of books, literary fiction things that I just don't like. So we'll probably skip that one. These are a couple other ones that I saw on other people's like haul videos that I thought the covers looked really cool of. And they're giving me fall vibes, to be honest. So we're gonna skip past those. Here's a couple other ones that I found from other people's videos that I thought had cool covers. And also this one, I just really love the uh, the title of My Throat, An Open Grave. I don't know, something about this entire thing, like the hands, the flowers, the title. Love everything about this. And I actually don't know at all what it's about. Uh, it says, Labyrinth meets folk horror in this dark and romantic tale of a lost girl and the shadows that lurk in the forest. So, I mean, definitely intrigued, but again kind of more fall winter vibes with that this one i have absolutely no idea what this is about but the cover like i need to have that it needs to be decor on my shelves like that is so pretty let's see oh it's a poetry collection did not know that honorifics so it's poetry i'll definitely get that at some point but again not today uh, and then the last couple ones that we have this one at the very top this is a new one that i added just recently this is basically it's called half arse which i think is kind of funny half arse human how to improve your life without burning out and it's basically like a self-help type of book and i don't typically like to read those because i do feel like a lot of times the self-help books kind of get repetitive but uh, i don't know something about this one is kind of intriguing to me lena norms is a half arser a shave one legger, a rinse the plates and tell your and tell herself any residual dirt will improve her immune system or <laughs> ew. And yet she's determined to live better, build a career, strengthen her relationships, be good to her body, sort out her road, sort out her wardrobe, find meaningful hobbies, act on her ethics and live a full, passionate, varied life. And it's possible. Half our human will show you to harness the power of considered chaos and upgrade the parts of your life that really matter without expending more than you have to give trying to be a superhuman is out being a half arse human is in i definitely can relate to that i think that's why i wanted to put this on my list because i am definitely like i look up to people that have this like go-getter kind of lifestyle but i know like for a fact i just do not have the personality for that but again i still want to like have all the things that i want to have in life you know all my dreams i want to make my dreams come true but i just need to learn how to do it in a i guess half-ass way <laughs> so definitely want to get that i'm like intrigued by this book all over again anyway uh the very last one that we have on this list which honestly i think is the one that i'm gonna end up getting if we don't consider wisteria uh but this is another kind of summer read so it's kind of making me not want to get it just for the simple fact that like i already have so many summer reads that i still have not read yet and like i was kind of saying before we're kind of in our last like fully summer month so i just don't know if i can squeeze in another book especially because this is going to be coming from the uk it's going to take a little bit of time to get here i don't know but anyway, this one is called You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And I don't know how to pronounce this author's name, but here it is. And the cover of this, honestly, I just love. Absolutely love. Uh, also, I love that this says raunchy, sad, and uplifting. A summer must. Gripping from page one. So the little quotes on here, definitely intriguing. And actually, we're going to go ahead and read the synopsis from this because it looks prettier. Faya, Faya, something like that, is about to be given the chance to escape the city's blistering heat for a dream island holiday. Poolside cocktails, beach sunsets, and elaborate meals. And as the sun goes down on her old life, our heroine also might just be ready to open her heart to someone new. So it doesn't really say much. It's basically a summer read and there's going to be romance in there. And you know what? 
as far as romance summer reads go, it's really all I need to know. <laughs> so I don't know. I kind of do want to get this one, especially because I've never seen anyone talk about it. So like, why not? You know, we're going to do it. Add to cart or a basket. <laughs> all right. So prompt number three. Okay. A couple of them fell out. Let's put them back in there. <laughs> Um, let's do this one. So we have a green prompt, which are basically your regular regular prompts. And this one says a book by a male author. All right. Uh, and this is also the first time we're getting to look at our bookcase, which is exciting. And I also did like specifically like curate the books on this shelf. I did a video recently where I kind of counted and went through every single book on my TBR, which is like 150 plus books. And that's just too many. It's very overwhelming. So I decided to kind of like start doing this kind of situation where I kind of like pulling and curating uh, of ones that I'm like the most excited for for that particular month. So certain things like Dark Academia and Horror specifically, I know I'm not going to read right now in the middle of summer, like I would prefer to read those in the fall. So there's none of that on here. And that way I'm also hoping to kind of like actually read the books that I pick in these videos because sometimes I will admit there's been months where I have read not a single one that I've ended up picking. So if you can't tell I'm trying to like come up with every single way possible to like read my freaking TBR. So anyway, uh, a book by a male author. I don't know if there's a whole lot on here. We have The House Across the Lake which is one that I've been wanting to read for literal years so like since it came out. So this would be a really good one. I also have Survive the Night by Riley Sager as well. And to be honest, I think that is it for male authors. I'm going to go ahead and go with The House Across the Lake. Also, I'm going to go ahead and grab our first book as well, our blue prompt one. And apparently I've already started this one. I don't remember doing that, but we're on page 36. So yeah, I keep thinking like maybe I shouldn't be filming this because my voice sounds so gross and scratchy and it's actually hurting my throat more to be talking. But so far we've been getting like really good prompts and books. So I don't want this to like not be my TBR at this point. We're in too deep, guys. We're in too deep. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pick our fourth prompt, which we're going to do this one. Ooh, another green one. I'm really just scared of the orange ones and the blue ones. Okay, this one says a book with a person on the cover. Okay, right off the bat, I know I have a couple or at least one. I have three options for a book with a person on the cover. First, we have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. And then we also have Done and Dusted, which even though summer doesn't actually end until the end of September, I feel like August is really the last like fully summer feeling month. Uh, September is kind of like, you know, a transition between summer and fall. So for these two in particular, I feel pretty confident in the fact that I'm going to read them regardless because I need to read these in the summer. They're very summer books, you know? This one literally says summer in the title. So... I think I'm gonna pick both of these, especially also too, because I've picked this one, I feel like multiple times for my TBR and still have not read it yet. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one back. This was our last option, Every Last Secret. Uh, and this also kind of gives summer vibes because they're like in a pool, but not today. Two more prompts to go. We are only gonna pick six this month purely for the fact that I feel like I need to put you out of your misery sooner than later. And also for myself, because <laughs> again, the more I talk, the more painful my throat is getting. So uh, we need to just kind of get through this. <laughs> Uh, I'm having a good time. I really wish my throat wasn't hurting so bad. Anyway, that's the last time I'm going to talk about it. Moving on. Uh, second to last prompt. We're going to go for this one. Oh, no. <laughs> I had a feeling I was going to pick one of these this time around because there's like five floating at the top. Uh, but this is an orange prompt. And these ones are basically kind of like my bad prompts. And this one says a book at the bottom of your wish list. Oh, so this one's kind of like a double-edged sword. I don't know if I'm using that phrase correctly, but basically it's kind of exciting because we get to buy a new book, but not so exciting because it's going to be one from the bottom of my wish list, which are essentially the ones that have been on there the longest and more than likely one that I have totally forgot about at this point. But let's see. All right, so we are in my list and we're just going to scroll all the way to the bottom and there are about a thousand and one books on here. So we're going to be here for a minute. <laughs> And it does say like a book at the bottom of my wish list. So I don't actually have to pick like the very bottom one, which is nice. But I do want to give myself like a range. So maybe like I have to pick between like the last 10, we'll say. My gosh, this is really taking so long to get to the bottom. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ooh, okay, actually the very last one's not so bad. We have The Confidence of Wildflowers. That's like an age gap one. And then we also have Things We Don't See, which is a fiction book that a poet 
a poetry, a poet wrote. <laughs> Uh, Savannah Brown she's come out with a couple of different poetry books and then she actually wrote a fiction book and then we have Girl Crush which is a non-fiction uh, it's actually the second book that this author has come out with uh, she's someone that I follow on Instagram she's all about like girl power and then the other one that she wrote actually the first one is on this list as well uh, women don't owe you pretty and yeah I've been wanting those books for quite some time uh, but I don't think I'm gonna go that route and then we also have magic for liars I don't remember what that book is about at all that was probably one that I put on here because the cover looks cool. <laughs> Let's see what that one's about. When a gruesome murder is discovered at the Osthorne Academy of Young Mages, where her estranged twin sister teaches theoretical magic, reluctant detective Ivy Gamble is pulled into the world of untold power and dangerous secrets. Okay, so she's like a detective. I'm gonna be honest, murder mysteries with kind of like a detective slash like PI kind of vibe are not typically my favorite. So I don't know if that one sounds that interesting. Also, I don't read a whole lot of thrillers and we do already have a thriller on our TBR. So I think I'm gonna skip that one. And then we have Cleopatra and Frankenstein. This one I purely put on here because of the cover. Like that is such a cool cover to me, but it is very much in that kind of like literary fiction kind of genre of books that like, I don't think I'm gonna actually like. So we're gonna skip that one. Uh, then we have Crying in H Mart. That's a nonfiction kind of autobiography, I think, kind of vibe, which I definitely do want to read one of these days, but I just don't think right now is the time. How many have we done so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have three more. Okay. <laughs> uh, then we have A Hundred Other Girls and Careering, which I think both have very similar vibes about like someone kind of like going after their dreams. I want to say one of them is about somebody that like works at a magazine. And when I was growing up, that was like, my dream job. The idea of like being one of those people that gets to like try out a bunch of beauty products and then like write an article, that always sounded really fun to me. But just like working at a magazine in general, magazines were like my thing growing up, like in high school and early 20s. Loved a good magazine. I'm kind of sad that they've kind of like died out. <laughs> and I mean Devil Wears Prada is like one of my favorite movies. Like that lifestyle just seems so fun to me. So anyway, <laughs> um, this first one, 100 Other Girls, which actually is a line from Devil Wears Prada. There is like an actual quote that says, for the fans of the Devil Wears Prada, um, and this one is about someone that is an aspiring writer slash amateur blogger. And she ends up working for Vinyl, which is a magazine, which kind of sounds like it's maybe supposed to be like nylon. So that one is definitely a very big contender. Um, but let's see what this one is about, careering, which is such a weird word to say, careering. <laughs> careering, verb, working endlessly for a job you used to love and now resent entirely. <laughs> oh, this one is also about a girl that's a writer for a magazine. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pick out of one of these two. And frankly, I think I'm gonna go with 100 Other Girls because it's only $7.50. So our like bad prompt totally ended up being a win. I'm actually really excited about that book. We are down to our last and final prompt. It's so funny, we have like hardly used our actual TBR shelves. <laughs> We're gonna pick, I'm gonna like dig down to the very bottom and pick this one. And we have a couple that spilled, so let's put those back in the bowl. All right, and our last and final prompt, another active one. Let's see what this one says. This one says, emoji generator picks. I saw this one in somebody else's video recently and I don't remember who it was, but it sounded like a lot of fun. So I'm actually really glad that I picked this one. Emoji generator, random emoji generator. This is asking me how many. Should I do like a couple or just one? Let's just do one for now and see what it does. Uh, randomize. We've got a little wave. It's kind of a boring emoji. A wave. None of these give me that vibe. I could do one of these because they both have like a hand in the cover and the emoji, you know, is a hand. But I am going to put this one back in the jar because I don't know. I feel like that emoji pick was kind of not the most fun. So I want to do this one again at some point. Back in the jar she goes. So let's go ahead and pick between Starcrossed and Under the Influence. This one is essentially a romance involving zodiac signs, which I absolutely love the concept of. And this one is basically about the assistant to an influencer, I believe. Also, this one is another one that has the Devil Wears Prada as kind of like a reference point for the book. So I think we got to go with this one, right? And here is our stack of our August reads. And we're going to go over them really quickly again, just to kind of refresh our minds. So we have A Game of Retribution, Done and Dusted, Just for the Summer, The House Across the Lake, Under the Influence, and then the couple of books we still need to purchase are A Hundred Other Girls and then this one, which I don't know yet, and that is the one that we picked from our Blackwell's wish list. <laughs> and with that, that is everything that I have for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comments what your guys' favorite book for July was and what you're most anticipating for August. <laughs>